So it is February 15th. We are halfway through the month now, well, a little over. <laughs> um, but I hope you're having a good Wednesday. And we've got our few topics for today. Um, it is National Bird Watching Month, so we found quite a bit of fun information. It's also Random Acts of Kindness Week, um, which I kind of feel like February should just be that with Valentine's. Uh -huh, I agree. Um, and then um, we have a fun project that you can do at home that is making bird seed ornaments. So they're like halfway done right now. They're kind they of look burdened. edible. <laughs> <laughs> don't think you might. it's like I wouldn't be for us but they're so cute I think the birds will like them yeah so um Lori is out she is in New Orleans so she'll be tuning in uh later on and she sent us a video last night of her in the middle of the French Quarter yeah on Bourbon Street looks so much fun <laughs> it did yeah we will um we'll put that in the video so you can see that as well today but uh We'll get a we'll get a live feed from her pretty soon. Um, but what did you do this weekend? What did I do this weekend? Well, Super Bowl weekend. Mm -hmm. So regardless if you like the game or not, that's all part of part of that. Um, so that was pretty much all we focused on. Actually, I focus on the halftime and the national anthem. Mm -hmm. And I was really really impressed with the national anthem. But I have heard lots of mm -hmm. lots of comments that Chris Stapleton did like he a, did a phenomenal very job. like heart moving yeah. performance. Yeah. And and as they panned um some of the coaches and whatever, you could see the emotion on their face. Of course, for me, the national anthem became very true to my heart. I always kind of like that was just something we did, you mm -hmm. know, we don't, and when my boys went into the service. And so it hits me emotionally every time. Mm -hmm. But to see that rendition of it and then to see them panning through and seeing to some of those coaches cry and the emotional you know it's just so that was neat to see and then um and then the halftime I get just entertainment I could take it I you know you hear you always hear critics and you for me I didn't think it was anything bad um I thought she did a good job I didn't realize she was pregnant um so yeah I'd be kind of moving slow too <laughs> if I was pregnant <laughs> Um, but you know, it was, it was entertainment. I was disappointed in the commercials. Really? Yeah. The commercials are kind of supposed to be the highlight and mm -hmm. there wasn't anything that did an aha moment. Um, I liked the puppy ball mm -hmm. with that's before that. And so as far as I can't even honestly tell you who won or lost, <laughs> I, that's, that's how into it I am. I was just, I just know it was kind of a good game, um, overall. Uh, so that's pretty much what I did, what did you do this weekend? So I, I was here Saturday, so I'm sure some of you guys saw me. Um, and then Sunday, it was like kind of catch up because I was here Saturday. Um, and then I had a birthday party that fell right during the Super Bowl. So we didn't watch oh. any of it. But I, our, we're just not big football fans. Like I, my, my side of the family, they grew up watching, you know, University of Alabama and they're big Bama fans. Mm -hmm. And so... Um, but I do have to say, uh, if you can see Seattle Mariners, because the Super Bowl is my husband's all time favorite day. Why? Because football's <laughs> over and baseball's on. <laughs> it's the end of football season celebration. And now all we get to listen to is ESPN and what trading who and everything for the next six months. <laughs> um. But I, I hope they have a good season again this year. They came so close to the playoffs last year that oh I know. Well, they were in the playoffs, but so close to the World Series. Yeah, I really yeah. hope they do it again this year. They did. They did a good job. It was, it was um, um, teeth clenching there mm -hmm. at the end, and like you know, so so a new season, and you've got you got Mardi Gras coming up this weekend. I do. So even though Lori is actually there yeah. and live. I'm going to a ball this weekend. Yeah, you're going to have a Mardi Gras ball. So that's fun. It yeah. is. That's, well, knock on wood that nothing happens with sickness because that's been going around my house. But we've been eating a whole bunch of vitamin C and elderberry. <laughs> Matt and I sanitized the entire house. I even cleaned the carpet yesterday. So we we're really hopeful that it doesn't hit us. At least hit us Sunday. It's fine. Uh, yeah. After, I'll just be like, afterwards. oh, it's the Irish flu. It's not. Yeah. Some kind of stuff. Well, <laughs> and you've got so much going on that you'd probably be powering through it without even realizing you have it True. until until it comes down like, oh, I'm miserable. <laughs> so, 
So yeah. If you guys missed me yesterday, Dolly was not feeling well. She's better today. It's like it's like a 24-hour bug, but now Vincent has it today. Mm -hmm. So So how many in the household? So that could actually be how many Steve weeks? Steve had it Saturday. <laughs> there you go. Dolly had it yesterday. Vincent had it today. So we'll see. And hopefully mom and dad don't have it. Right. They have that immune system. We have sanitized a lot. Exactly. Like my exactly. hands are cracked today <laughs> because of how many chemicals I put in my house to try to sanitize. That's always how it happens. <laughs> you have something you've been working on all year long and boom, it mm -hmm. just, just how it always is. So, But I do have to say, I'm glad my kids already had it mm -hmm. because that was my fear is that one of them was going to have it by Saturday and I was going to have to cancel the baby. Yeah, yeah. 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 So. so it's better. Yeah. You guys can tough through it as adults oh, more yeah. than, than the kids could have. So that's good. So with that, we are going to talk about birdies today. Mm -hmm. Do you want to start? You've got some great information over there. Well, um, I just, I don't know. Do I start? Um, just some tips. You said it was national bird watching month, bird watching. So with that, um, you know, we, you can go bird, you can bird in your backyard, mm -hmm. you can bird, um, we've talked about the Arboretum, mm -hmm. we're going to talk a little bit more about that later, and, and some of the places they, they have, um, but with that, there are some tips, and with spring coming, um, tips for feeding the birds, so if you've got feeders, um, I started a little bit of this myself a few years ago, mm -hmm. um, I am no expert, I just liked the concept of having birds visit my yard and there are pros and cons to that. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm still learning that like what I won't do next year, but refill your feeders frequently in the spring. Cause that's when they're coming kind of out of hibernation. Mm -hmm. Um, and they're looking for those food sources, it's especially critical. Um, cause it can be unpredictable. We have late snowstorms, So it's mm -hmm. kind of like, that's when I always say that's that time of year that winter and spring are fighting each other who's going to win right um ultimately spring does but sometimes winter gives it a good fight so i don't know what we're going to be this year i'm about had it with winter but it's still hanging on it's come back through a little bit like it got warm for a while um i saw a meme online the other day that was talking about winter and it's like winter is an argument with spring so it leaves and then it comes back through the door and another thing yeah, exactly <laughs> that's exactly what it's been feeling like so um keep your feeders clean um they should actually be cleaned weekly with a mild bleach solution and let them dry thoroughly hmm. and another thing is providing which i didn't know that and i should have known that um provide fresh water clean water sources for your spring birds um and maybe a heated bird, bird bath is ideal in the early spring because of the freezing, mm -hmm. the potential freezing. I do have um, a water fountain mm -hmm. so that my dogs love. That's also <laughs> their summer dog bowl. Um, <laughs> so I do have water for for them, but actually having, you know, that's where the bird baths mm -hmm. and all that stuff is for them. Um, what else does it say? Heated bird bath because it can dip in the water will also help attract more birds to the yard. So they quickly discover the spring buffet. So what I found is I started like nobody's visiting my bird feeders. Mm -hmm. no, but I think they go out and they spread the word. Hey, so-and-so mm -hmm. down the block, <laughs> come join me. And then all of a sudden you get a bunch of them. It's like, what happened to all my bird feed? You know, it's gone. So this is the time to start prepping for it, getting ready for it. Um, even though the winter it's cold, when it comes, it comes. And so um, some of the things are, it's it's really good to start getting binoculars if you're going to go bird watching. Mm -hmm. um, get those field guides. The Arboretum has them. The, mm -hmm. the Audubon Association has yep. them. Um, start, but start your feeding station because practice in your feeding station, which that means, you know, if you do something in your backyard, you can start watching the birds. Mm -hmm. um, and so that way, when you do go out to go bird hunting or bird watching, I should say, two different things. <laughs> He's not going to shoot the birds. I, yeah, <laughs> yeah, sorry. Bird watching. Maybe shoot them with the camera. <laughs> yeah, <film>. exactly. Exactly. <laughs> You're like, excuse me. <laughs> um, start a feeding station at your home to begin learning about the birds. The windows are a great blind for the watching birds at a close range, soon the birds lose their fear of movement and you can study them at a longer length of time. 
don't feed birds in wild habitats or give them human food. And we'll talk a little bit more about food as well. Um, and as you watch them, try not to disturb them as much as possible because, mm. you know, they'll they'll take off. Um, but the Yakima Area Arboretum has a great, you can go down there, they're located on Knob Hill, right? And uh, I-82 uh, and Knob Hill. Mm -hmm. It runs adjacent to the Yakima River and the Buchanan Lake, which are great areas to spot birds in. Mm -hmm. And the grounds itself are open from dawn to dusk um, throughout the week. I know I've been there just to take my grandkids. Oh, yeah, it's on beautiful. A, it's beautiful on a walk or we even had a little picnic. You know, we brought some sandwiches. And so, um, yeah, it's got a lot to offer. It's kind of a hidden treasure over there. It yeah. is. And then they do the luminaries at Christmas time. And it's yeah, so they have a lot, of, a lot of stuff out there. So um, with that, what are some of the things that you... Um, you have. I know you you dealt more with um, the Audubon Society. You've I got did. Great information um, so Ellen from the Audubon Society, she kind of sent me a few things, um, trying to set up a education program with her um, to come out here for about 30, 45 minutes, discuss birds that are um, in the Yakima area and um, what they do as a society. Um, so the Yakima Valley Audubon Society is a group devoted to the world of birds. Through field trips, nine monthly evening programs each year, classes, citizen science projects, and conservation, they focus on more than 300 species of birds and the preservation of their habitats that occur in South Central Washington. Um, it's super inexpensive to be part of their society. So she sent me the, the membership form. So if anybody is interested, I have this. It has where you can fill out and um, what it costs to, for seniors 62 plus, it's only $15 a year. Um, or That's what our activities are here. It is. Well, for the month. So that's even a better deal. And then it's $25 for the household. That's so if off. husband and wife, 25 bucks, um, and you can be part of the society and keep in the loop of all they do. And then on the back of their form, it has more detail of their monthly programs and field trips that they do and education and outreach. They even have a newsletter. Um, but the next one coming up is February 23rd. So that's a Thursday at 7 p.m. They will be at the Arboretum. <laughs> um, and they will feature a program on woodpeckers. You can attend in person or remotely. They have a Zoom link that you can jump on. And then other monthly meetings will be the fourth Thursday in March, April, and May. And then again, beginning in August. So they must take a summer break and then and get back at it. Um, but yeah, they have some great stuff coming up. I, I really would like to get them out here and explain any more. If anybody wants any of this information. I think that would um, be great. Yeah, just please Great stop by the, the front that. office. I can make you a copy so you can get all in the know. Yeah, and the more things about the Arboretum, um, you know, they'll have, it was, this is a little kind of checklist um, brochure that they have, and I'm sure they have it if you go down the Arboretum. Um, but these are all the birds that are in the, or in our area out there. And where to watch them. One of, one of the areas was the natural area on the east side. Um, the woodland and man-made blind allows close observation of bird feeding. The feeders stocked from October through March. Um, they raised dike by the Yakima River at the Arboretum's north and the overlooks the Buchanan Lake, a good spot for viewing water birds. Mm -hmm. um, there's also a lot of wildlife around the Jewett Pond and it's a bench, plus there's a bench there to sit on and nearby flowering plants make a good spot to sit and relax with your binoculars. And then there's also the 10 mile long Yakima Greenway pathway um, that passes through there. So yeah, so it's like the Canadian goose, the wood duck, the mallard, the California quail. I mean, there's tons of them, osprey, morning dove, barn swallow, American robin. Um, so it's kind of neat because it's a little checkoff list. So this yeah. would be the great too with your grandchildren or a friend and kind of a challenge, like check it off. Oh, I, I didn't realize there were so many in this area. I like, didn't either. I, I didn't kind either. of, I've seen a few of them because I was kind of looking at the list of, of like, oh, I've seen that here and there when we've gone on hikes, but like, that's like a three page list of birds. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so there is, so you're checking them off as you spot them and see them. So it's kind of like uh, what's that game? A Where's scavenger, <laughs> scavenger hunt. You go on a scavenger hunt for, but you don't collect them. You just watch them. Yeah. 
Um, but yeah, we we'll get your binoculars and this little checklist and so you get a great way to start it. Um, so I thought that was pretty cool. Yeah. Um, at the Arboretum. Uh, makes me want to go. <laughs> go check it out. Maybe we'll go on a little field trip some some Yeah. <laughs> so um, but there are some things that I also caught. Um, I don't do you do you have I don't want to no, that's it for, for what I have. Go ahead. Um, you have more information. Yeah, about... on some mistakes. Mm -hmm. So I kind of mentioned a little bit of, as I'm learning, um, some of the mistakes that happen when we do backyard birding um, that are common. And obviously, we just talked about it not providing running water, mm -hmm. how that's important to that, because they do rely. And I don't know why I didn't think about it. My, we rely on Water and our pets food, rely right? on, but that's not something you think about for wildlife of them to exactly, have water. Exactly, but they rely on. It. <laughs> um, another thing is not cleaning your bird feeders. We kind of talked about that, how important it is because, um, you know, mold and spores and mm -hmm. that stuff that you that know can, that makes sense. But yeah. you wouldn't think of oh, I need to go outside and clean right. my bird. Feeder. And once again, you know, birds get sick like the rest of us do. You know, that's so. why eggs are so expensive. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Exactly. So. Um, cleaning usually nine parts water to one part bleach is a safe solution um, to use. Mm -hmm. And then wash your hands after cleaning and not changing the seed out. And so I fell into this as well. I forget about that, that um, it should be cleaned out monthly. Hummingbird feeders should be cleaned weekly because mm -hmm. of the sugar content in there. And cleaning feeders regularly helps prevent bacteria that may be harmful. If there's any moisture from rain or snow, feeders should be cleaned more often. Um, change the seed in a dry seed feeder every five to seven days to avoid mold, bacteria, and bugs. So that's one thing I learned at the very beginning that I wasn't doing. I'm like, oh, they're just not hungry. They'll eat when they want to. But yeah. after so long, it's not good for them. Um, also, one thing that I'm not good at at all is feeding the birds in the winter. Mm -hmm. I hibernate and I feel <laughs> they're hibernating. But um, if you can feed them food and what all year long it's ideal because they 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 don't all migrate um there are still species that stick around so some birds become reliant on regular food sources in favorite yards so change the type of food you pro provide them seasonally because they need more fat i believe in the oh. winter time. but never put away the feeders for winter during the colder months natural food sources are more limited naturally so they do need more protein like suet which we'll talk about that. That's kind of that, um, I think it's kidney fat and some type of thing. It's more of like a lard. Yeah, it yeah. All so the, they need the fat. So if you think about, if you think about, um, what is it, the bears? The bears go on high ration. Mm -hmm. So what it, it's kind of like we're going to do right now for Mardi Gras mm -hmm. is you're basically going to pile on and just eat, 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 yep. eat. So that's what they need to do in the wintertime is they need to pile on that fat mm -hmm. um, to get them through the through um, through the winter so that kind of heavy comfort food that's their comfort yeah. food <laughs> <laughs> no stew and and that good stuff that chili and those comfort foods we have but that's theirs and then using you've probably heard of this I know I have using dye and hummingbird feeders how bad that is mm. so a lot of the commercial hummingbird feed, um, uh, liquids that you find they're red they're red mm -hmm. well the reason that they're red is because that's what hummingbirds attract to is that color mm -hmm. and but the dyes in it aren't good for them. Mm. So it's more important to have a natural, which is, I think, a little bit of, what is it, sugar, sugar water. Um, and there's a there's a level to how much sugar versus water. But clear, clear mm. nectar. It is the feeder that you use that attracts them. So you, Because it's red on the bottom. Exactly. And you'll, uh, you'll notice uh, some of those feeders, they'll have a little red stem and then a little yellow one mm -hmm. in the middle, just that mimics a flower. Yeah. So it's more important that the feeder that you use is attractive to the birds than the liquid because the, they, they don't care and it's better for them. They keep selling the red stuff. You think that that... I know. Somebody, I know. like some act, bird activist would be like, okay, you need to yeah, stop this. Yeah, exactly. And um, so they still do, but... And there, well, I think there's controversy because I've read about it, um, not not for this episode, but just as I was doing it. And so there's kind of controversy over, well, the dyes today don't have the same thing. And mm -hmm. so it's kind of one of those things, but it's just easier just to avoid it. And besides, 
it's a lot cheaper to make it at home than to go buy it at the store. Oh, yeah. You know, I can't remember how many parts water to how many parts sugar. And that's all it is. Yeah. You just melt down that sugar on your stove, let it cool, and then fill your feeders. Mm -hmm. So... Not providing shelter, and birds can find comfort in nature, natural shelter from shrubs, trees, and bushes. Helps them feel protected from predators. Make sure that your trees and tall shrubbery aren't too close to the feeders because this can give critter, critters, squirrels, mm -hmm. raccoons, those, those sweet little critters, um, access to jump onto the feeders and then they scare the birds away. Mm -hmm. And then don't keep your feeders too close to your house. Another way to help birds feel safe is keeping a little distance between the feeders and your home. Um, birds need the space to fly in from above and land on feeders. Keeping feeders too close to the windows and the sides of the house could cause harm if the birds fly into the window. Well, I'm going to tell you what else it does. <laughs> you get bird poop on your windows. <laughs> so the closer it is to the house, you're going to get all the good and bad to it. Mm -hmm. Um, so birds can, birds might also avoid the feeders if they're too close to people because they fear predators. Mm -hmm. And then not targeting birds you want to see. There are many single seed blends, treats, and suet cakes to pick from. And we'll get into that as far as every different type of food attracts different birds. So it, it does. depends on what you're wanting. Um, make sure that that food is what you're looking for because you could have a food out there and it's attracting and you're like, why don't I see this bird? Right. Well, that's why. So if there are certain ones you want to see, make sure you, you get their favorite food. There are also some birds that only live in certain areas of the world. Make sure to put the right seed for the bird in your area. And you can get online. There's all kinds of, I'm sure um, that Audubon Society will also have a lot of information about um, the types of types of foods. Well, we also just getting the checklist of what's in your area, you can kind of... Uh, yeah, just what you get. Yeah, see what, what the bird, what the birds like, and and um, you know what kind of birds. Because some birds, birds are beautiful, but some could be more of a nuisance than others, mm -hmm. and so you don't want to really attract that. And then another misconception, I think we've all done it. I've done it as a young mom when I had my kids is feeding bird bread to birds. Mm -hmm. So wild birds need nutrition, and when they're fed bread, their small stomachs fill up with empty calories, which prevents them from being able to eat the items they need, like seeds, bugs, and fruits. Hmm. Um, I had also heard that it kind of it fills them up and maybe even bloats them, which that that makes sense. So birds not only not and bread is not only the best choice for hmm. us, which it's not, no, but it isn't for birds either. And not having birdhouses or nesting areas, that's also important because it's part of their shelter um, to have that. So those are some of the common mistakes we all make um, as we start out. And I wouldn't even say I'm a bird watcher. I think I was just interested in having that pretty in my backyard. Right. You know? So with that, you've made some cute little treats here. I did. Um, so they're super easy to make. You can make them with your grandkids. You can make them for yourself to put them in the tree um, or um, just to have a fun activity to do. I didn't get anything specific. I do have to say Walmart was on it when it comes to like National Bird Watching Month because the whole oh, aisle was already. devoted to all kinds of bird seed. <laughs> um, it had humming bird um, solution and everything. It was all um, right next to the gardening before you even went outside. Uh, so I didn't get anything specific. I got the economy bag <laughs> of bird seed. So I don't know what it will attract, but if you want something specific, then get a different um, type. So you're going to need four cups of bird seed and then three-fourths of a cup of flour, and you'll mix that together in a large bowl. And then in a small saucepan, you're going to take a half a cup of water and then three tablespoons of gelatin, just plain gelatin, no flavor, no jello, just gelatin, and then three tablespoons of corn syrup, and you're going to kind of melt it down. Um, That's what's going to bind the, right. the seed. And um, I didn't, I didn't have a saucepan this morning because I did this in the office because I was supposed to do this last You're night. So, oh. <laughs> okay, I just, I just messed up the cutest one. It's okay. Look at that. It was a shell. <laughs> and we talked about that. How the simple ones um, are better. Yes. So, because yeah, I, um, 
as you can see with this one, it's a seahorse. As cute as that is. I see you try, holding yours. So try putting all the stuff in there. So bigger is better. Like you're just simple. We will shapes. go feed the birds out <laughs> later today with this stuff that I just made a mess on. We'll see. But um, if you don't have a small saucepan or anything to, to put the stuff in, I literally used the Keurig this morning. Brewed a cup of hot water. Oh, that's a good idea. And then just poured a, a half a cup of water into a bowl and mix the gelatin and the corn syrup all together. And it, it mixed just fine. Um, then you put them in your cookie cutters and kind of press it down to make sure um, it sticks together. And it yeah, takes and it about... Yeah, it doesn't fall apart like <laughs> I just did. <laughs> but you want to spray your cookie cutters with a little bit of cooking spray. So that is probably why it came out. She they're sprayed supposed... them very well. <laughs> very, very well. But yeah, that that's fun with the kids. It is. And then you just stick a straw in it because once it's done, you pull the straw out and then loop a, a piece of yarn, string, whatever you want to use, and you can hang it on your tree. Um, but it does take 24 hours to really get hardened. So they feel a little hard right now, but um, by it's tomorrow, nice though. Set. I've seen them do it in, um, in paper cups, and then mm -hmm. you just peel the paper cup. Yeah. And you can hang, you know, hang it. I've seen them do it that way as well. Also, pine cones. Yeah. So I bet you could take this mix and really like pack it into mm -hmm. a pine cone and that gives them something to pick at. Yep. Like a feeder. So yeah, those are fun and, and fun for the kids to, um, to be a part of. So I'll post this on, um, I'll post the recipe on the video as well as I'll post it on the website if anybody's interested. But it was it was super simple. I think I made them, what, in like 20 minutes they were done. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So it's something to do for yeah. the day and something to but one thing you with. did you did notice is that the intricate more intricate ones yeah um it's harder to it's get harder it yeah so more of a simple round or a hard yeah or, as long as it has a bigger opening yeah <laughs> no it's a good example now yeah that is a good example <laughs> there you go i feel bad no it's really good <laughs> but i got i got 10 ornaments out of um the the batch I did today, which is a fair amount of bird seed, um, and none of them were really big. They're just about medium cookie cutters, and like I said, just do do easier ones. That's pretty neat. Yeah, that's and you get to see all the different seed in there. Mm -hmm. So that leads me to the stuff I uh, about the seeds. Mm -hmm. um, when you go to the store, you probably notice it's overwhelming. Mm -hmm. There are all kinds of bags, all kinds there of are. options. And you, I know the first few times I went, I was like, well, what do I get? Right. Well, this one looks, and then I'm into the pretty. Well, this mix looks really pretty. <laughs> and this is kind of boring. And like, they're going to, but believe me, pretty doesn't make yeah. any difference, actually. Because. They're not about presentation. <laughs> no, no. Um, it can be confusing, but the actual, one of the number one, um, seeds is sunflower seeds mm -hmm. and if you can offer one and there's a couple different types of sunflower seeds so you've got your black oil sunflower seed which is probably the ugliest ones and you probably saw bags that are just black and you know what if you bring those to like the ducks they love those and they're they're it's one of the cheapest mm -hmm. and they like it and they're good for you good good for them so the black oil is the most popular in the shell the most loved by almost all birds mm -hmm. so that one really covers a lot of territory um it's not the kind that us humans eat not right. the kind we go to the ball game and we're just spitting them out <laughs> they have a higher oil content they're thinner mm -hmm. um smaller making them easier for the birds to crack mm -hmm. and so even though they're good for most any bird, the ones that really are attracted are cardinals, woodpeckers, jays, nuthatches, grosbeaks, finches, you go on and on, house sparrows, doves, grackles. Mm. So there's quite a quite a few of them. Now the striped ones, that's the ones we eat. Yeah. And um, they're larger than the black ones, and we do consume them. They are more a little more expensive. Mm -hmm. They're not as popular with the birds. So if they got stripes on them, then those are the ones that the, they're thicker. That's why they're harder to, to get the shell off. Of. I can understand that. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Cause even us, I mean, when we do, you have to really like bite, into, bite it. into it. Yeah. So, but the ones that birth that do like those would be your bigger birds, like your cardinals, your woodpeckers, mm -hmm. your jays, um, nutcrackers. Those are the ones that are going to, going to 
utilize that seed a little more. Mm -hmm. And then, of course, the hold ones, which are the ones with no seed. Right. I mean, with no shell. Um, those are referred to as sometimes on your bags, they'll be referred to as the sunflower chips or kernels. Mm. They're the easiest and the most popular seed. Yeah, I think that's a lot of the kernels are in here. Yep, and there so are you'll some see the kernels, kernels in there. Um, you'll also see bags that are just the kernels. Mm -hmm. And even though it seems like they're most exp they're very expensive when they're like that, you're not there's no waste. Right. So when you're buying the other ones, you're buying the shell with it. And so they're not gonna eat the shell, they're just gonna crack and drop the right. shell. So your sunflower seed that's unshelled, um in the long run maybe is not as expensive mm -hmm. as as your other ones. And so the hold ones, they're referred to as like I said, flower flower chips. They're the easiest to eat. They're very popular, loved by almost every bird. So if you are going to start with one seed, mm -hmm. that's probably a good, you know, your black oiled one or the cracked ones, that's probably a, uh, one to or start bringing them in. Or economy pack that was seven ninety nine at Walmart yes. <laughs> that didn't say what bird would like it. It just said economy pack. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> but yeah, but the, at least the other, the sunflower seed will get you to kind of start seeing them come in. It will attract them because mm -hmm. that's what they really, really love. Um, safflower seeds. They're smaller than the black seed, black sun oiled ones, but they have a tougher shell. So mm. consider it's considered a miracle seed because here's the thing. We there's annoying pests, squirrels and blackbirds. They're good to use in those feeders that are not squirrel proof. Mm. So you have to remember that if you're out in the country, you're gonna have um with bird watching, you're also going to have issues with other animals. So sunflower is a really good one that bird squirrels can care less about. Hmm. Um, like cardinals, finches, uh, they're all the same. Seems like that attracts quite a bit. But thistle, nylar thistle, mm -hmm. which I'm trying to think if they have nylar thistle in their thing. Mm -hmm. They're tiny black seeds, but don't confuse them with actual thistle that, that develops into annoying weeds. Hmm. So the nylar seed has been sterilized so it doesn't germinate. There's another thing I learned when I started. So I placed these up along, you know, I had my grass and, and so birds, when they don't like something or they're seeding it, they'll kick it out or they'll crack the seeds mm -hmm. and it'll drop on the ground. Well, then if you're not careful, some of this stuff germinates. <laughs> Before I knew it, I had patches in my lawn of this, I don't know. And literally I had to like rake out all the seed buildup. So placement is huge, especially mm -hmm. if you have a nice lawn area that you don't want, you know, you don't want that kind of stuff and be careful because there's not a weed killer that kills them. I oh, thought, cool. oh, I'll just I'll just spray the, you know, fertilizer weed killer. Mm -mm. No, they don't kill it. There's a lot of weeds I've noticed around Yakma. It is really hard to get yeah. rid of. Yeah, it almost like the weed and feed almost mm. feeds some of this. Stuff. Right? Yeah. It's like they're just like sitting there like, yeah, spray it with me. Yeah. <laughs> so in starting out, I would recommend watching where you're putting the location of your feeders because underneath there is where there's going to be all the drop and it will germinate. So in this case, the nylar thistle does not germinate <clears throat> because they've they've sterilized it. It is not fresh birds. Birds have not not interest in it, and you need a special bird. Okay, for the tiny seed. So because it's so tiny, you need a special bird feeder. For oh, it. okay. Um, peanuts. Peanuts are a great source for birds. They love them. They're healthy. They have the fat and the protein we talked about. Also, a good winter food Ooh. for them. Um, make sure to get the roasted and unsalted peanuts for them, both shelled and They're unshelled. They're watching their heart. Yep. Yeah. <laughs> well, heart month for our birds too. The difference between the shelled and the unshelled actually has to, is more uh, the attraction of the bird that attra is attracted oh, yeah. to it. So the peanut in the shells are the larger ones. You're going to get your crows, your jays, your magpies. Um, your woodpeckers, those kind of birds. Mm -hmm. The shelled ones, you're going to attract your cardinals, your jays, um, your chickadees, starlings, crows, also magpies. Um, but if they get wet and they're not eaten within a few days, they could rot and mold. So you got to keep an eye out on the um, shelled ones. And then white proso millet. It's small, round, white seeds. And I know I see them in 
And oh yeah, the, there's like little tiny ones in there. Yeah, they those are a favorite among ground feeding birds, and they're commonly used in bird food mixes. Mm -hmm. So they attract birds like sparrows, blackbirds, grackles, juncos, things like that. Mealworms. <clears throat> Mealworms also offer a very high fat and, and high protein content. They're healthy for backyard birds, um, and they can be bought live or dried. So I've used them. Um, I've used the dried, and they kind of look freaky looking. I mean, they look like an insect. Have you seen the mealworms mm -hmm. when they're dry? So the live ones, you need to refrigerate them, but they do last a lot longer for quite a few months because in the cold, they go dormant. Mm -hmm. So they stay alive. The dry ones are less of a ha hassle. They're fairly low cost, but the birds can be picky about it. So one good thing is to kind of weed them into, you wean them into the dry. So you kind of, if you start off with your wet, okay. start incorporating the dry, eventually they wean into it and they and they start. Um, but this, I guess it's supposed to be really good. But only the early birds get those, right? No, it didn't say anything about that. the early birds yeah. get the worm? Well, you know, that's, <laughs> a that's a good one. <laughs> like over my head. <laughs> Um, because yes, some prefer only the live ones, so it must okay. be those early birds, <laughs> and they reject the dry ones, but you can combine them. Um, bluebirds like them, nut nut nuthatches, nut hatches, mm. um, wrens, starlings, those are all. And then the other thing is corn, which we see in here. Mm -hmm. So you've got your corn, you've got your cracked corn, which more most of the bird food has the cracked corn in it, and you've got your whole corn. Very inexpensive, good for the the whole corn is good for large birds like jays, crows, ducks, mm -hmm. grackles. Um, but beware because they also squirrels, raccoons, oh, possums, yeah. skunks. Well, they like the, if you rabbits, the little squirrel feeders that are like the whole corn that you just stick on and they come in. Yes. Yeah. The, so you just have to be aware that come one, there may be other things that come to it. But the cracked corn is the most common in bird seeds. Sparrows are highly attracted to them. They're very inexpensive. Um, it might not be the ideal bird visitor you want because you're going to have, it will attract the jays, the juncos, the cowbirds, the magpies, the rap, blackbirds, and quail, but it's also going to attract, like we talked about, your possums and some mm. of those other things. And then suet. We've talked about suet, mm -hmm. and I know I have bought suet packs. They come in um, round discs. They come in pellets. Mm -hmm. They come in um, what you could put in the bird feeder. And you know what that is? It's hard fat that is mm -hmm. found in the kidneys and the loin of beef and sheep. So they take that fat, which is good for them for winter and so mm -hmm. forth, and um, they melt it down. And then they you can actually buy suet and buy bird food. And then make and, your own. Yeah, and oh, blend it together. Oh. Mm -hmm. But it's pretty inexpensive at the stores. Um, and, it's, and there are little suet um, bird. My thing just keeps going on. Um, Somebody's trying to get a hold of me. Um, hangers, kind of like the the feeders. They yeah, feeders. they're like the little cage feeders. Mm -hmm. that you can yeah, use. or you could just set them down. You know, hang, do something like this, and hang them. There's many, but they're fairly. I was surprised. They're fairly, fairly inexpensive. Mm -hmm. um, also, we talked about the sugar sugar water um, nectar. Mm -hmm. So that sugar water mimics what they find in flowers. Mm -hmm. And the solution is easy. It's four parts water, one part sugar. Okay. Great for hummingbirds and Orioles, which I didn't really even know that, mm -hmm. that Orioles also like it. And the other one is fruit, um, healthy snacks for birds. So it's healthy for us, healthy for them. So it can be fresh, dried, or jelly. That I didn't know. I didn't know you could use jelly, mm -mm. but that makes sense. Right. Um, best to cut into small chunks and put them in small quantities. Like summertime fruit can spoil quickly and attract yellow jackets and bees. Mm -hmm. So um, they're better for cooler weather. So right now is probably an ideal time for that. Yeah. Um, to have that. But the couple of things that you need to avoid that is also in every, seems to be in every bird seed that is poor quality and they use them as fillers. Right. So it's for marketing purposes, what they can produce to cost them a little less. And that would be Milo, which is also, it's a sorghum and it looks a lot, it's a little round seed and it looks a lot like, what did it say? Don't confuse it with that white millet seed. Mm. They look very similar. So read your bag ingredients okay. is the best way because they look very similar. 
Also avoid oats, canary seed, rice, flax, buckwheat, wheat, and rapeseed. So those are some fillers that aren't necessarily the best for, for birds. Hmm. But when I started out, I really um, just kind of started buying bags. And right. then and then that's how I learned what was germinating and what, because if birds, what's interesting is birds don't like them. Mm -hmm. They just, they will, they will muddle through that stuff and just good stuff. kick it, kick it all out. And I mean, they make a huge mess. <laughs> so really it's better off, even if it costs a little more to buy something that they like, otherwise they're going to um, protest <laughs> and make a mess in your heart. Oh, so those are good tips though. Like yeah. I did not realize there were so many variations. So yeah. Yeah. So Walmart has a bunch, but I didn't realize there were that many. Yeah. And, and, and even if you don't want to start with a mix, like the black, the sunflower, the black boiled sunflower seeds, those are a good one to start mm -hmm. with. Um, peanuts, you know, something simple where you start attracting some. Um, so yeah. Yeah. But there's, there's but there is, it's overwhelming. Mm -hmm. You just, you just don't know when you start it's kind of like buying good quality dog food for your dog it's like so maybe get a, a audubon society membership and they can tell you exactly yeah. where you're supposed to go from there go to the experts <laughs> <Right? laughs> they'll really be able to tell you especially especially with birds from our area yeah you know mm -hmm. there's certain birds that that i like everybody you know they're all pretty birds but some are significantly prettier than the others and i kind of got lots of people love the hummingbirds mm -hmm. um i don't know about you but i never see them because they mm -hmm. like boom boom they're gone they just like these fast little so um bird watching a hummingbird is a little difficult mm -hmm. <laughs> you almost need to put a game cam on them to see them true <laughs> so... um oh i think we're getting we're getting a live feed from Lori. so um Let's see. Let's see if you can hear us, Lori. Take it away. So hello from New Orleans. Let the good times roll. We're standing out here in front of the World War II Museum. And um, we've got, as you can see, everybody's getting off the bus, getting their armbands. Um, this place is amazing. I don't know if you can see it. Uh, see if I can show you how big it is. It's like six blocks long. And then we have the Victory Theater over here for the World War II show that uh, Tom Hanks does. And um, yeah, we're having a great time. Two parades coming up, the Bayou, and uh, the food is amazing. So hopefully you can post the uh, video that I sent last night from Bourbon Street. It's kind of windy here, you can probably tell. But um, wish everybody was here. We're gonna do this again because this city is something else. There is so much history here that you don't even realize and the way they talk. Anyway, thank you. We'll see you guys when we get back. Bye. How fun is that? All right, well, it was good seeing you, Lori. We can't wait for you to get back. So it sounds lots like your stories, lots of pictures. We'll put that video on um, of what you were doing down in the French Quarter last night. Nothing wild, guys. Don't worry. Um, but, uh, yeah, looks like you guys are having a great time. So here we are on Bourbon Street. Woo! Craziness! It's a little nighttime. Uh, we made it. Music everywhere. It's all real. Wish you were here. Um, well, the other thing that we were going to talk about is this week is Random Acts of Kindness week, which I kind of feel like February should just be a Random Acts of Kindness yeah, month. It should just be a kind month for heart, love. Yeah. So um, just a few things you can do in Random Acts of Kindness. One, you can make bird seed ornaments and give them to your neighbors. Ta-da! You yep. did something nice for them. Um, it can be as simple as saying a kind word. Um, I will say during the winter months, depression is higher. So you never know who really needs to hear how much you appreciate them or um, just... <sighs> 
that they're a good person or that they're a good parent or they're a good grandparent or, you know, they do really good at their job or they're really good at volunteering. So um, just as simple of saying, hey, we appreciate you and thank you um, means a lot to somebody. And it could mean a whole lot to somebody that's going through a bad time and it's not they're not showing it. Yep, it is. And I have to say that, um, Leslie, you did the hearts for Valentine's so 14 days before, and it was neat to see them, you know, pop up there. But for me, there were some of them that really took me back because I'm like, I never knew somebody looked at me that way. Mm -hmm. I didn't, you know, I'm funny. I didn't think I was funny. So you just never know what you're going to say to somebody that they had never either perceived themselves or, I mean, in my lifetime, I'd never heard heard it put that way about me. You know, you hear people do always, you know, or they, you hear kindness throughout your life and the compliments, things people give you and the not so nice things. <laughs> but um, that's what we're, what we're talking about today. But anyway, um, some of those things that popped up, I had never really kind of heard it and it took me back. So mm -hmm. You don't know, and you're absolutely right. I mean, suicides are so high right now, and I don't think people realize that mm -hmm. um, for for many, many reasons. And, you know, it could be just that one word or that one little moment of appreciation that can make the difference between somebody deciding to follow through or not. Right. You know, and so just just that kind of, and, if, and we'll go back to Thumper. And if you have nothing nice to say... <laughs> Just don't say anything at all right. because we all have our bad days. Yes. I mean, even I have, you know, I have my bad days too. Just keeping the clamp on it yep. and walking, walking away. Um, yeah. So even if you can't say something nice for whatever reason, maybe you're having a bad day, you've got some bad news, but don't, don't pay that kind of stuff forward. No. So, and so kind words. Doing something for somebody, you could get them a cup of coffee here, meet them here for a, a cup of coffee yeah. and treat them that day. Yeah. Come play a card game with somebody. Come play around a pool with somebody. Um, maybe making a, a dinner or sweet treats for someone. I, I do have to say this year, so I normally do it for this, my staff and I do it for my kids and I do it for my husband. Well, this year I reached out to a lot of the parents at their school they're at. And we came up with 14 reasons of why the staff there is so amazing because it really is a good school and they care about mm -hmm. these kids. Um, and then we brought it all in, had it on a board. Um, and then I made uh, some cake pops and, and brownies. And then another mom had post-its and, and highlighters and, and another like trail mix that she brought in for them to have as well. And it was just something that I think they really needed because they have been going through a lot. It's it, There's a lot going on at the school with events coming up. And I think they needed that little boost. Mm -hmm. um, so just remember that. Do something nice for somebody. Month of February is a great reason to do it because just because it's Valentine's Day yeah. yesterday, it's not all about just love and who's your Valentine. Right. It's just about being a good human and being nice to one another. Well, and it's in, in February is we're winding down coming out of winter, but everybody's in, in you have you know, seasonal, a lot of people suffer from mm -hmm. seasonal depression. Yeah. And so February is a good month to kind of like, hey, you know, let's just continue to rally. We're going to be into the spring soon, but right. um, it's, it kind of gets real heavy, you mm -hmm. know, and especially if you're, you know, say you're a truck driver, and you're driving in conditions. I mean, it becomes by February, winter is getting very long. Yeah. And so it is a good month to, to just kind of bring, bring that heart, that feeling of, of joyfulness, of appreciation of, you know, kind of being aware of it. Mm -hmm. So pay it forward somehow yeah. with words. Call a friend. So, yeah. It doesn't have to cost you anything. Just, just call, call and check on somebody. Somebody you haven't talked to. I had a great call um, just randomly. Um, a really good friend, dear friend of mine who lives in Nevada. Um, I hadn't talked to her probably in about a year. Mm -hmm. And she randomly just called. And I said, hey, how are you? And she's like, you know, you've been on my mind. So I thought I'd pick up the phone. Mm -hmm. And so sometimes that's all it needs to be. Yep. Just if they're on your mind or something just kind of hits you to call, just give them a call. There's doesn't cost you anything, just a little bit of time. Write them a text. Anything. Exactly. Exactly. Or an email. Yep. Um, so that's that's just my spiel. 
But moving forward from Random Acts of Kindness, we do have a um, blood drive coming up March 17th. I'm taking appointments if anybody's interested in um, donating blood. So that's a good way to pay it forward and, and help the community. We also have our Women's Shelters Toiletry Drive going on um, this quarter till March 31st. And so there's a list online. There's a list on a flyer here that has everything that we need, new unused items. And um, they are very appreciative. Um, the Lower Natchez uh, Women's Group brought in $100 worth of items the other day. That was very kind. So um, I told her that I would yeah, take a picture and post that. Great participation. Mm -hmm. It just, people just walk in that door, not because they're coming to our activities mm -hmm. or what, just to just to drop it off. Mm -hmm. um, so it's really neat to see the, how, how many people have, are, you know, I see things, you know, you go to the store, you see something on a billboard. Oh, that's a great idea. And then, mm -hmm. and then you forget right then you get to doing your things and it's always neat to see them actually walk through the door that they've taken it and followed all the way through in right. their busy schedules and and for such a great cause and mm -hmm. so it's been neat to see um our lobby kind of build up with all that stuff so yeah. um so yeah going on till march 31st bring in your stuff um and then next Wednesday, because by the time we have the show, it's going to be over. So mark your calendars. Next Wednesday is the Taco Feed for Seniors, Inc. Um, $5 gets you two tacos, beans, and rice. It's a great meal. Um, so come on out, support Seniors, Inc. and the Harmon Center, and have a good meal. And come and try their rice, because they they did really, really well mm -hmm. with with the um, attendance. It was one of the highest, if not, I believe, the highest attended mm -hmm. that far. But everybody was raving about the rice. Mm -hmm. And I guess they have a different rice or a different method. And so they're going to keep it that way. So And Carol Haraf. So Carol, if you're watching, thank you for doing that. Mm -hmm. She kind of jazzed it up and, yeah. and did her own little recipe with it. And it, it was really good. So it's mm -hmm. a hit. So if you didn't catch it last month. Catch it this month. Catch it this month and try it out because it's really, it was really, really good. And then if you are looking for spaghetti feed tickets, I know it's a bit early. Um but it is March 22nd and they already have tickets out at the Senior Inc. office and at the coffee bar if you want to pick those up. Um, other than that, that's that's about all. Oh, it's recycling. We're up to like 700 pounds now. It. So thank you guys. So that's another way to pay it forward. You're helping the community by not Yeah, I think our next goal should be, should be a thousand. Yeah. We should that. I got to make a new. Yeah diagram out there because now right now a I have, whole wall i have a we did it and i think people stopped <laughs> doing it because it said we did it they're like oh we're done <laughs> now it should be how much can we do right it just keeps growing and growing and i'll just put a new number up every time i yeah did it and if you're interested in helping pick up the the stretchy plastics and drop it off at fred meyers at the trex location in the front of the store um please let me know because we are always looking for new volunteers to help with that and it's like every other week that you would come pick it up once one time that week every other week um and it's just a drop off and i would weigh it and have it ready for you and it's about two to three garbage bags full that you have yeah. each time and that's really helpful mm -hmm. to to be able to volunteer and do that that really helps us a lot mm -hmm. so um now next week we will have lori back so that would be nice all three of us will be here um, she's going to go over restless leg syndrome because um, she didn't really get to touch on that when we had our show last week. Um, and then we we are also going to touch on, what was that holiday called? No, I forget how it was put. Let's all eat right day. So um, I know we touched on that the week before talking about a heart healthy diet and not to jump in all at one time gradually do it so we'll be talking about tips of getting started gradually taking baby steps to eating right and then restless leg syndrome so i hope that you come and see us next week and um it'll also be ash wednesday so oh yeah lint starting too yeah. we'll be yeah. through mardi gras so i'll and and Lori will have some great stories oh yeah i'm sure yeah. and i'll have so, pictures from the ball as long as i'm not throwing up on saturday <laughs> <laughs> no no no, no. <laughs> So we'll have actually a great little mix, a little bit of um, just to kind of wind down and close out February. Yeah, um, we're done. Yeah. Next week, really. And then you're up for 
for March. So spring is, is, I always associate March and spring. Oh yeah. Um, so it is around the corner. Thank goodness. <laughs> <laughs> and then we'll be complaining about how hot it is, how windy it is. I had July and August are not my favorite months. Even yeah. though August <laughs> is my birthday month, it's not my favorite month. <laughs> Just yeah. get to September and I'm okay. I'm a, I'm a particular fall. I love the fall, but I will, I could easily live in spring and fall conditions. Oh all yeah. Year, all year round. Mm -hmm. So people, some people say, well, it's nice to have all the seasons and it is, Yeah. but I prefer to go to it when I'm ready for it. <laughs> and then when you're done, it's over. Exactly. <laughs> I, I'll go to the ski lodge when I want snow. I'll go, <laughs> I'll go to the beach when I went, you know, heat and sun. So I know. I don't she, think Mother Nature works that way. No, <laughs> no, it doesn't. And no sooner than I'm going to say that, then she's going to like, oh, yeah, we'll show you. <laughs> so to end today, I um, I do have a bad dad joke for birds. <laughs> <laughs> so do you know why they call seagulls seagulls? Why? Because if they flew over the bay, they'd be bagels. <laughs> <laughs> there you go. That was a good one to tie up with so today. Share that with somebody. Random acts of kindness make someone laugh. Exactly. Exactly. I hope you're having a good Wednesday. We will see you next week. Bye. Bye, guys. Thanks for watching Chat Face with the Harmon Center Girls. If you like this video, please subscribe to our channel. Like or share as well. Have a great day.